First was the law, then grace. First the shadow, then the truth. Just as prowess does uphold the law, so does expression through art and learning precise show us grace. Let us accordingly begin the narrative regarding the origins of the order of the laurel and for what purpose this accolade has begun. After the known world came into being, Richard of Mount, Mount Royal was the first to embody the law, with Martinel of Garking at his side, and did folk the winners, followed him, supported by Mary and Samar. The crown then passed to Henry of Haven and Wendell of Tavistan. Folk and Mary did a second time sit the throne, and again stepped forward Henry of Clement to glorify the end of Maywood. William the Scion and a man of Shirai de Talavera did then receive the oaths of the people, and the lamp of knowledge did show its light into the shadows to illuminate the truth of inspiration. The skill of the many were elevated that January day, both the chivalry glorified and the arts uplifted. Honor and dignity showed forth in Beverly Clotet and Alfonso de Castile were the first to be created in laurels, and from them many have been raised to such a seed. The arts shot forth with the brightness of virtue, they drive away the shadows. The truth of the past is eliminated. We are enlightened by the knowledge of our forebears. A laurel that riches the kingdom generously, giving of their skills and knowledge that others may grow. Fruitful are the arts and bountiful the throes of science. These stand as pillars of our society, and thus the tree is stronger for its firm foundation. The fruits of grace nourish us, and flowers of courtesy sustain us. These harvests delight us in ineffable glory. The crown, bearing the battle flag of the kingdom, you maintain the right in consultation with the order of the laurel to uplift those worthy of such accolades. The crown now calls before them the order of the companions of the order of the laurel here present. I come before you, I'm all up, I come before you with my few humble words to tell you interest, risk it. The mountain soars over her birthplace in the west, and like a tree planted, flowing stream, her skills and bounty flourish. Her branches lineages are heavy with greatness, leaves foster sisters and stalwart falcon. Honor was all this in the west. The sea is sang the sun's praise, and under Obadiah's protection she flourished. Ferris Ingrid learned from many and enriched the lands of her birth, and the lion's land. And then she came to the outlands, where the heart leaps and the heart soars. Brave and unshakable, deflecting the storms and the waves that came upon her, she is uncorrupted as iron. In the treasure chest of her heart, she stores knowledge and kindness as the labor-loving bees store honeycomb. The word of her deeds and skill spreads throughout the land, and many speak of her. What shall we call her? Learner and teacher, preceptor and maker, researcher and countess, beacon of grace and flower of beauty. And as much as we may witness and proclaim the things unsaid are many more. She comes before you clothed in excellence, her wisdom and continence shining like the sun. Ingrid Falcon, will you swear your oath today, sworn upon our sword, to become a companion in the order of the Lord? I will.
there was no one medium that he excelled at. Instead, he was one of the few that everything he touched became art. Illumination and calligraphy were no. He went to become a master point maker in the first stages of the MCA. Other arts fell to stone, jewelry, woodwork, the master of a brewing. <laughs> Beyond that, he was a teacher, and the art he helped create lived on in his students. Obadiah was a warrior poet, and his moral motto for art is to glorify the deeds of war. Obadiah was a person of monumental merit and great melancholy. While Demers still fought with his time and energy, the people that he held close and shared his inner personhood were few and far between. And from my experience, so was. The medallion he received today was made with this truth there. You, Ingrid, are not just a person of his war that was so many. But a comfort star for him. He held you dear with his concept and feel, and truly loved and cared for you. I am a believer in faith, and it cannot be coincidence that this medallion now finds its way to you. No, this medallion comes to you today because it was brought for you. And by generous gift, it is finally come home to where it was meant to be. Odd cannot be hurt. I cannot be good to witness this curious elevation of the wall of the people. But know, as I do, the gears are too open. And my hand is going to walk over the way to your ether. Let these medallions be passed hand to hand symbolize the bond you have with each other. I call for witnesses for the oath exchange <coughs> I'm Duke Walrich, and I speak on behalf of the Order of the Chivalry. It's my honor today to speak of Ingrid. I've known her now for many years, and I've always been truly impressed by her kindness and loyalty. She inspires great acts from those around her. As a consort, she cheers on her champions. As queen, she inspires the armies of the Outlands to victory through her grace and beauty and poise. She rises up, raises up the people that are around her. Through her often loud <laughs> and self-deprecating humor, <laughs> She will encourage and praise those that need it most. I've heard things said, Milady, you are much more organized than me. If you feel that you want to host an event, you should. She encourages them. She says, that scene is amazing. You should show that to Mistress Cecilia. She would be so impressed. <laughs> She says, Duke Walrick, you're so strong and handsome. <laughs> Clearly, you can eat that hamburger in one bite. <laughs> I could not. <laughs> but I was inspired to try. <laughs> there are others 
their own insecurities, would try to tear those around them down. But Ingrid, despite her insecurities, rises up those around her to make them better, to give them the confidence and the courage to try, try for great things. <laughs> Your Majesties, I don't believe that Ingrid knows how important she is to those that she interacts with. The confidence that she imparts on her friends and on new people to, to do better, to be better. This barony is made better by this gentle. This kingdom is made better, and this society is made better, and it is by heartfelt feeling and my honor as a member of the chivalry to recommend this great gentle. Thank you, Your Majesty. <laughs> To those who wield the great year in this kingdom, she has many names. To those she sponsors, her name is Rome. She is bowing to the defeated, lifting their spirits with words of encouragement and praise for their conduct. She is kindness to those serving the dream by marshalling and running list tables, up and checking with others to make sure that they have all the help that they need. To everyone in the great year community that she interacts with, she is called friend. She is well loved and respected in my community, and her love and support of the Rapier community is without question. She is my favorite. Thank you. 
she branded her accessory might have been wrong. But it was exactly what I thought the education was. I saw her walking in. It, it was her clothes. I'm not going to lie. She taught me a little bit about history and selling and advising. And I just got really good at picking those things out. I didn't really hold on to any of the other things she did. <laughs> but when I saw her, I knew that's what we were all actually striving to be. That's what we all wanted to be when we grew up. We wanted to strive across that field with Roth or anything that I might have on Roth or anything. But I But that was what a barefooted heathen sick dog still wanted to be when I grew up. I wanted to draw the attention not to her, but how beautiful I was. But because I was actually wearing period appropriate clothes with a period appropriate gear that Ross Hart told me the white saw baby. <coughs> but as far as being speaking as a royal peer, she knew when I needed her the most and it wasn't her best time in this year. It wasn't the time she wanted to be trained the education. And she made time for me. <coughs> and took me into her home and into her schedule, and my schedule was too difficult to do. And didn't make me clothes, but, well, she helped, I took the things out on her. <laughs> <laughs> but she brought me into her home and she explained, this is how I made the pattern, and this is how it came to be. And she didn't even see the explanation because it wasn't her favorite thing. But she saw me who needed and she stepped up and she was everything I needed to be like So I'm pretty sure because I went last, everyone who did my career was out of the Gentle peers, we thank you for your counsel and witness. We understand that our royal cousins of Artemisia have words for this candidate as well. The words of their majesties of Artemisia. Yes. <laughs> and to Bela and Nerissa, right and noble monarchs of the kingdom of the Outlands, and to all assembled at the Alberon Baronial Midwinter Celebration, greetings to you from Sean and Nisa, 47th monarchs of the glorious kingdom of Artemisia. Good cousins, we bring words to you today concerning the works and worth of your subject. Countess Ingrid Rutkin, as she gives contemplation to the question of joining the Order of the Laurel. It has been our great pleasure to witness the works and impact that Ingrid has had in the art of historic clothing. While much of our observation has been from afar, we wish to briefly share our personal experience regarding the execution of her craft. Several years ago, in preparation for a previous coronation, Her Majesty Nisa had a vision for what she wanted to wear. All of the talented artisans available to us, many of whom are here today in support. Ingrid was the one who for us had just inspired the look. She kindly agreed to bring that look to life and to help Nisa to create that magic that every queen hopes for at their coronation. There are inherent difficulties that come with creating clothing for someone from 600 miles away. As part of that project, his process, His Majesty Sean had an opportunity to collaborate with Ingrid as another aspiring artist. As in this time, Ingrid was able to guide Sean in the final patterning of a style in which he had not been taught, but had practiced, not practiced in some time. She was willing and able to help him refine his skills and to give him a better understanding of the historical context of what they were trying to recreate. With the patterning settled, she proceeded to create an outfit for Nisa that was absolutely masterful. In this one experience, we were able to witness master craftsmanship, the willingness and ability to teach her art to others, generosity, and largesse. All of the attributes that we find to be desirable appear in society. 
This personal experience reflects our greater observations of her impact, not just in the outlands, but throughout the known world. Good cousins, we are grateful for this indulgence. You have allowed us to add our voices to the chorus of praise that you have heard on behalf of Countess Ingrid. We could not recommend her highly enough to be admitted to the Order of the Laurel. In peace and friendship, we remain Sean Rex Griffiths Artemisia, Nisa Regina. Bring forth the mantle.
day by render homage and fealty to my sovereign lord and lady, Bela and Marissa, by my guard, King and Queen of the Alps, who will from this day forward be my liege, lord, and lady. I will make remain true in all ways, serving them faithfully. This do I swear by my honor and high ideal that I hold the tears around. So say I, Ingrid Jackson. We hear your oaths and accept your fealty, and do pledge to you that from this day forward until the end of our reign, you are our liege woman. We will defend your order and protect your rights as a peer, and protect the trust that you have placed in us, mighty with justice, tempered with mercy. Let the scroll be read. Yeah. 